Woman's body twisted in pain to give birth, but the baby wouldn't show his head. The doctors kept cheering, and they finally heard the baby cry. The baby is healthy, and the husband quickly comes to the baby. Jessie in the hospital bed feels the pain growing underneath her. I feel something. Jessie's cries for help were overwhelmed by the joy in the room. The doctor told her that the bleeding was only temporary, although Jessie repeatedly stressed that she felt very uncomfortable. The doctors considered it normal and did not intend to take any action. It was only when Jessie passed out from the pain that the doctors rushed her into the operating room. Jessie was able to save her life in time. After recuperation, Jessie planned to return to work, but moms will always have the challenge of balancing family and career. She had to go back to work soon, but her daughter wanted Jessie to take her to school. To calm her down, Jessie promised her that she would stay with her after work. Her daughter happily agreed. Her husband reminded Jessie, even if the person is a child, she can't make a 100% guarantee. The child would be disappointed if she didn't deliver. Jessie is a career woman. She thinks she can handle the complexity of her job in an orderly manner. So she thinks she can take care of the kids too. Besides, her husband was home on sabbatical to be a full-time day and take care of the family. Jessie felt she had everything under control. Her co-workers were happy to see Jessie back. Stan, who was helping to take over the job, faced Jessie with confidence. It told Jessie that her team was handling the job well. Jessie was supposed to be happy, but she couldn't smile. She was vaguely worried that her position would be replaced. Between work, Jessie went to the unoccupied storage room. She looks at the baby's photos while she expresses the baby's milk for the day. She happened to look down and noticed a dark red scar above her chest. Jessie forgot how it got there. She was still working late at night after everyone had finished work. She came home and her daughter didn't blame him. Instead. She hugged her mother with great excitement and wanted to share with her the interesting events of the day. But then the sound of her son crying came from the bedroom. Jessie told her daughter that she had to go take care of her brother first and then come back to say goodnight to her. Her daughter told her that she didn't come home to make things worse. Jessie was shocked by her daughter's words. But right now she couldn't care less. So she went next door to see her son. She put her son to bed and rushed to her daughter's side to keep her company. The next day, Jessie woke up with pain. When she looked down, there was a deep bite mark on her thigh. Unlike before, this bite mark was still bleeding. Jessie was out of shape all day. She couldn't control her search for relevant news during the meeting. In order to keep up with the work process as soon as possible, Jessie had to leave her children behind and pack her bags overnight for a business trip. In order to get back early, Jessie had to catch an early flight at 3 a.m. The inexplicable wound on her body and her newborn baby made her unfit to travel at this time. Jessie couldn't help but complain to her husband. Her husband sees Jessie's anxiety and suggests that she go to couples counseling when she returns. Jessie agreed, but when she came back again, both her husband and daughter were so frightened by her that they backed away. The woman had just given birth. Unidentified bite marks appeared on her body. At first, she didn't think about it. She thought it might be shingles, so she took some medication and went on with her life of caring for her child and working. In order to hold on to her current position, the woman went on a business trip shortly after giving birth. Professional negotiations put Jessie back in charge of the big picture. As the only woman in the creative team, she had to work harder in every aspect. After the intense work, Jessie planned to take a break. She hangs up her husband's phone and enjoys a free night of partying with her colleagues. She doesn't think about the family, the kids or the work at hand. Jessie's whole body is very relaxed. She looked at the scarred areas and found that the skin had become smooth. Now she can finally relax and rest for a night. Before she went to bed, she received another video from her husband. He told her that the baby had a fever. Jessie gets up and tries to stay calm and asks for his opinion. Her husband was furious with her for not answering the phone. He spoke briefly about the baby's condition and hung up the phone in a hurry. Jessie booked the earliest flight the next day to go home early to take care of her son. As she was packing, she was shocked by the image of herself in the mirror. Her daughter rushed to greet her mother when she heard her return, but she ran screaming back into her father's arms. Jessie came in with her suitcase. Her face and neck were covered with horrible bite marks. She tries to hug her daughter, but she runs away in fear. She offers to go see her son, and her husband gently stops her. Jessie starts to get angry. She just wanted to hold her baby, but her husband asks if the wounds are contagious. Jessie then thought she had to handle them. Jessie rushed to the bathroom to clean the wounds, but by then there were wounds on her legs too, and the wound on her stomach from yesterday had started to bleed. Her husband advised Jessie to see a doctor. Jessie remembered that she had nearly died in childbirth when the doctor had neglected to treat her hemorrhage. She didn't want to go back to the hospital. Her husband was worried 
that she was under too much stress and advised her to go to counseling. He mentioned ethnic culture in his words. Jesse immediately retorted with sensitivity. The husband felt that Jesse's reaction was a little too aggressive. He suggested that she stop working for a while. But to Jesse, it sounded like her husband was emphasizing how hard it was for him to stay home with the kids. The argument was inconclusive. Jesse went to work as usual. Her colleagues in the elevator looked at her with great concern. Jesse turned her head away in discomfort. She couldn't afford to make any mistakes at work for the sake of her children's future. But when she walked into the office, she saw that her former subordinate had been promoted. He was talking directly to his supervisor about a project she didn't know about. And when they saw the bruises on Jesse's face, they all suggested that Jesse be given a long vacation. She hates her superiors for dropping her just because of her scarred appearance. Regardless of her ability to do the job, Jesse raises her voice to express her displeasure, but the pain suddenly starts to be intense. The wound on her hand starts to get bigger. Jesse collapses from the pain. A woman has just given birth to a child. Strange bite marks appeared on her body. At first, there was only one on her chest, then more and more spread all over her body. A bulging foreign body appeared on her wound. She gritted her teeth and pulled the foreign body out, but there was a tooth hidden under the wound. She fainted from the sight and woke up in the hospital. She tried to figure out what was wrong with her. When she stepped out of the hospital room, she met the doctor, who almost let her die in the hospital bed during the delivery. She subconsciously and forcefully pushes the doctor away and tries to get out of there. Jessie kept walking forward and unexpectedly came to a group of mothers. She takes a closer look. The women in the seats were all covered in the same horrible bite marks as he was. The women asked Jesse to join them. Jesse didn't know what to make of it. She asked if there was an outbreak, so they were quarantined. And a woman told her they would explain everything. Guided by the woman's soft voice, Jesse let her guard down and began to remember the first time the bite marks appeared when she decided to go back to work. It then appeared when her daughter didn't want her to leave because it made her feel like she couldn't balance life and family. Once again, she realized it was on the night. She went out and missed the call about her son's fever. After this careful analysis, Jesse vaguely realized that she was used to playing the role of a strong woman in the workplace. Whenever someone threatens her power, she feels the pressure. She tries hard to be a good mother at home, but her busy schedule makes her unable to catch her daughter's bedtime story. So she always feels indebted to her family. And when she faced her son who was waiting to be fed, she had to prepare the milk in advance before giving it to him because she couldn't let go of work. She thought she was ready to balance family and life, but she is still overwhelmed by the endless problems. She lives with the self-blame of not being able to handle it every day. She feels guilty every day, and the woman replies that she's letting the guilt consume her. She sorted out the cause. Jesse began to try to slow down. She bared her worries to her husband. Her husband's thoughtfulness helped her begin to reconcile with herself. Life seems to be slowly moving in a good direction. When women become mothers, the change in status gives the men added responsibility. For working mothers, balancing family and work is even more difficult. In order to play the role of superhero, they choose to avoid the stress in their hearts, but the long-term pressure will cause unseen damage to the body. When they exceed their limits, those injuries are like ugly, painful bite marks that erode the skin and body. I hope people around us can be more tolerant of new mothers. Let's not mock them for their out-of-shape bodies, and don't blame them for their momentary negligence. A mother does not have to stress herself out all the time in life. She has to give herself a moment of respite from the hustle and bustle of life. While she is taking care of her family and working, she should not forget to take care of herself.